Okay, everyone. So now we are learning that database connectivity with data grid view. There are three steps we have to follow. The first step is creating the database. Now we are opening the MS Access. We can take SQL, Oracle, or MS Access for creating the database. We can opt any of the type. So let us suppose that I am using the MS Access here. You can use SQL or Oracle. So here we have to click on blank database. Then it is asking us, first of all, give us the path. I am just clicking on this icon, then going on the desktop, then afterward clicking OK. Now, here you can see that it is automatically giving the name of database. But let us suppose that I want to provide my own database name. Let's say DB. So this is the name of database I want to provide. Now you should understand there is a major problem when we are connecting with the database is the type. So we are clicking again on this icon and we should see that there is 2017 and 16 databases. Sometimes it happens that your system is not supporting or .NET environment which you are using is not supporting this type of database. For the safer side, we are opting the 2002 to 2003 format. Then afterward clicking OK. Now this is DB, which is database name I have given dot MDB. Click on create. So here we can see that there is some kind of database is showing to us where we are having the option of tables. Now we have to right click on this. Then afterward click on design view. It is asking us what is the name of your table? Let us suppose that my Table name is S underscore table. S stands for student. So student table, let us assume you can take employee table, any table which you want. Okay. It is asking me to design. Design means which type of columns will be there and what are their types. Let's say I am providing S underscore ID. So this is the student ID, which is auto number. Auto number means if you are adding five students, automatically it will provide one, two, three, four, five. If you are, let's say, having 10 students, then automatically one to 10. So it is auto number. Now, second field, what we want? Let's say I want S underscore name. This is the student name I want. What is the type? I want that there should be the short text. Now, what I want? Let's say I want student mobile number. So I am providing mobile. Now afterward, what is the mobile number? It is of category number. It is not text. So click over there and select the number. Similar way, if you want to provide student address. Now here you can provide the address also. Again, it is asking the option. Now here in the drop down, you can select long text because address can be long. So similar way, if you want to provide date, currency, yes, no option. So anything you can opt as per your requirement. So here I am using the long text. So this is the structure of table which we have designed. Now afterward, we are clicking on right click and open. It is asking me that you want to save the table. So you have to first save it. Yes, save it. Now you can see that the structure is available in front of us. So in this structure, we have to enter the entries now. We can see that in the structure, we have defined S underscore ID, which means it is a student ID, which was auto number. S underscore name, which is the name of student. Here we have to provide the short text we have already selected. In the S mobile, we have selected the number. So automatically one number is displayed as zero. S underscore address was the long text where we can provide the address. Let us suppose that our first student is Ankit. I'm providing my name. You can provide your own. You can see that automatically one is provided because it is auto number. The next field is S mobile, which is the mobile number. Here you can provide any mobile number which you want. Let's say 9999. This can be a mobile number. Now afterward, the next field is S address, which is the address of student. Let's say you want to provide student is living in Delhi. You can provide it. Now, let's say you are providing another student. Let's say I'm giving my surname. This is a student. You can see that auto number automatically two is displayed. 
So you can provide any random number. Let's say again, I am providing this one. Afterward, where it is living? Let's say it is living again in Delhi. So this is how you can provide multiple entries here. And afterward, your database is created. So in this database, you are having one table, which is S underscore table. Then afterward, click on save. So you can see that your database is created. So our first step is complete, which is creating the database. You can use SQL, Oracle, or MS Access for creating the database. It is totally up to you. Here I am using the access. Now afterward, we are going on the second step, which is creating the connection. So from this database to our application in .NET, we are creating the connection. So we are going on the .NET now. Here in the .NET, we have to go on the left hand side, which is the Server Explorer. I am going to dock this. So on the left hand side, you can see that this is the Server Explorer. Here we are going to create the connection with the database, which we have already created. So right click on the data connection, click on add connection. Then afterward, you can see that there is the data source. This is very important. Click on change. Here are multiple options which are available. Let us suppose that you are using the SQL. So there are three options, SQL Server, SQL Server 3.5, SQL Server Database. So if you have created database in SQL, select these options. If you are using the Oracle, then click on the Oracle Database. If you are using some other database, click on the other. Or if you are using MS Access, which is our case, so click on the first one, Microsoft Access Database File. So click on OK. You can see that Microsoft Access Database is the part of OLEDB, which is Object Linking and Embedding Databases. So OLEDB covers access. Now it is giving the option of Browse. So with the help of this Browse, you can select the database which we have already created. So click on Browse. Now on the desktop, you can see that the DB which we have created is already present. So click on the DB. And afterward, click on open. You can see that it is showing the file is in use because we have created database and we have not closed the file. So first of all, we are going to save this and closing this file. Afterward, press OK. Again, click on the database and open. Now you can see that database file name. So here, see user Zanke desktop. This file is attached. So first one is selecting the type of data connection, then afterward, just taking that file. If your database is having some kind of user name and password, then you have to enter. We have not entered any user name and password in the database, so we have to keep it same as it is. The important part is that your connection is created or not, for that you have to click on test connection. So click on test connection, then afterward you can see that test connection succeeded. If anyhow this succeeded don't come, then you have to recreate the database or there is a problem in your type. You know that at the time of creating database, we have opted the option that it is compatible with earlier versions also. So you have to click on that. Otherwise this test connection will not come in some of the system. So if it is succeeded, then that means your connection is created. Then afterward click on OK. So our second step is over in which we have created the connection. In the first step, we have created the database. It can be SQL or Oracle or Access. In the second step, we create the connection. So connection is created and the type will be depending upon the database. So here you can see that there is a small plug is available here. db.mdb, this is the database name. Small plug is available, that means database is connected. Now we are going on the third step, which is connecting with the application. And here in this program, we are going to take the data grid view. And we know that in the data grid view, coding is not required. So now we are going on the toolbox. So clicking on the toolbox, here we have to find the data grid view. You can see that data grid view is present. So just drag and drop. Now afterward, 
we are going to provide the proper space for that now here i want to provide my name let's say so click on now afterward going on the properties here in the properties we are going to select the text let's say i am providing my name so ankit varma i am providing so this form is having the name now let us suppose that i want to provide some label here in this label i want to say that connectivity with data grid view so in the text we are saying that connectivity with data grid view so this is the control which is available into the dotnet click back you can see that connectivity with data grid view this is available now with this data grid view we want to connect so here click on that on the top corner you can see that there is a small arrow click on that now here it is saying that choose data source now again the drop down here add project data source so click on that afterward you can see that there is a option database so click on then afterward next data set we know that dotnet support adio dotnet and with the help of adio dotnet it use the connectivity and this adio dotnet have disconnected architecture means a small database named data set is created with the client application so here in our dotnet application our data set will be created so here click on data set then afterward next here if you want a new connection then you can create otherwise we have already created the connection so here you can see that then afterward click on next now it is asking us that do you want the database should be copied to your local folder means sometimes that happen your database is available into the d drive and let's say your project is created into the c drive if you are going to show this project to your some concerned person or your friend then you copy the project but forgot to copy the database then your project will not work so for the safer side it is saying that do you want to copy that database to your current project let's say i don't want i know where my pro project is stored and where my database is stored so i will copy both no problem so here select no if you want that database should be copied to your project then select yes now afterward click on next head is showing that it is retrieving the data set with table you want a table or the views or you want both it is totally up to you select accordingly i want both click on finish now afterward click back you can see that whatever the student id and name we have taken are showing others are not showing because of the space so extend that again we are going to extend that you can see that all the options are now showing so accordingly you has to increase the size of data grid view now afterward again we are going to reset the size for this form now afterward i am aligning this into the center so here our project is ready now afterward we are going to run this so here we are clicking on running you can see that here are all the records which we have stored into the database are now showing into the data grid view so these all records with student id student name student mobile and address are showing into the data grid view so for creating this project we have taken three steps number 1 creating the database you can use sql oracle or ms access step 1 step 2 creating the connection now for the connection you need the server explorer now from the server explorer you create the connection connection type will based upon your data base let us suppose that your database is of sql then select the sql or similar way oracle access you has to select that afterward the third step which we are having is the connect with the application so here we have taken the data grid view and with the data grid view we have opted the connection so here in the data grid view there is no coding required you can see that we simply clicked and our project is working so here data grid view coding is not required but let's say you want a customized application you want that database record should be available into the text boxes or the buttons then you need the code for that so this is our program 
where we have created the connectivity with the data grid view. 